about Connecticut that has become like the destination site after San Jose for, for Bellator? What is yeah, it about? It? It's you know, welcoming. To, yeah, to be honest, I mean, uh, look at the casino. It's amazing. And I'm talking about the Moheen Sun. We've done yeah, more yeah. fights there than any place else. Yeah, I go there a lot. That we've consistently moved back. I think that's like our premier destination for Bellator. And uh, Tom uh, told me earlier that he's going to induct us into the Walk of Fame, and, uh, which would be a great honor. And um, you know, that means we've had more consecutive sellouts there than you know than any place else that we've gone. And uh, it's just going to be an honor to get that award. But uh, they're great partners. They're great promoters. The casino is amazing. Mm -hmm. They treat us well, and uh, my staff loves it there. I love it there. They have. Uh, a great time there, and as well as we put on great fights. And yeah, that yeah. arena is spectacular. Yeah, it's just I just love that arena because when they fight, you could hear them. You know, it's like mm. you could you could just hear the crowd. Yeah, it gets yeah. really loud in there. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, going back in the end of October. Now for this big event in, in Bridgeport main event, is that winner likely someone that may be next in line for the Congo Bader winner, especially if Congo were to prevail over Bader? You know, I'll tell you um, what I'd like to do is is it you know, a uh, title contention fight, absolutely. I think it's gonna definitely move them forward into that, that, that position. But let's see how the performance works and then let's take a step back and then take it back to LA and San Jose. We'll have a conversation about, you know, who who would take the next step. But if look if one of these guys looks fantastic, he yeah. just really dominates, and I would say yeah, it, it'd probably be a, it'll probably be the next shot for them. Speaking of the heavyweight champion and two five champion, you mentioned in a tweet that Bader is the best heavyweight champion in the industry. Yes. Could you talk a little more in depth on why you feel why that way. Why are you way? smiling? Come on now. We all know that. He's uh, he's very very good. I cannot deny yeah. he's he's yeah. pretty awesome. I mean here here's here's how I feel. Look, if he fought Steve, uh, Stevie, what, what, what would happen? Right? It's mm -hmm. like. I think he's a better wrestler. I think he could deal with the striking ability. Uh, and I think that uh, it would end up on the ground in a ground and pound situation, right? And I think if DC had to rewind it, yeah. DC's my boy, man. We're, yeah, yep. you know, I love that guy. Yeah. And um, if, if he had to rewind it, I think that's what he would have done, mm. right? Because he was win DC was yeah, winning that yeah, fight, yeah. right? Unbelievable. He was strategy. winning that fight. To me, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Take it down. This, you know, go for you know, but yep. didn't work out. And to Sidney's credit, he's had a good body shot, good punches, and you know. But uh, I, I was looking for more, you know, transitions from that I see from Daniel Morgan. Um, but when he comes to two, Bader, he's he's got that transitional game, and I think and I think that uh, you know, Bader and uh, Stevie would be a good fight, but Bader and DC would be an amazing fight. Yeah, That's yeah. a fight that never happened. So that would be a, another, you know, great fight for him. But look, I think my guy can handle any any one of the qualities of their champ. And to me, my guy's proven he's got one punch power, right? And to go through the gauntlet of the tournament, see how he does against Congo, uh, I feel good in saying that he's the best heavyweight in the world. You know, and and uh, these things sometimes, you know how it is. On any given day, one punch, one different takedown, yeah. things could happen. But I, I'd say if you had, if they fought eight out of ten times, you know, I mean, ten, fought ten times, eight out of ten, I think my guy wins. Now, of course, on, on any event, you have a local feel. Now, on this one, you have a, a very, very big time local star in Nick Newell. Now, I know he's on a one fight deal, but you guys have really been pushing a, a marketing push. He was here today at these events. He was on ESPN with Ariel Hawani. Yeah. Like, is he is he on a one fight deal still, or is there more a likely chance Nick will be staying around? Listen, the way the way I look at it is like he's a seasoned veteran that's you know done it all, and I have so much respect for him. I've been a fan of his, and as a martial artist, I really respect everything he's done. You know, and the perseverance and Donald's spirit, all the things that you need to, that you learn in, in the martial arts, he's he's accomplished. Um, but then as far as fighting, it's, um, you know, we already had a fight card book. I got a call saying, hey, you know, uh, his manager said you know, Nick would like to fight on the card. And so we said, okay, let's do it. But what I told his manager was I said, look, if if he looks good, has a great performance, then we'll continue the relationship, okay. you know. And so it's more of like a showcase. Yeah, this yeah. is a showcase for Nick. This right. is not a tryout. He's already a seasoned veteran. He doesn't mm -hmm. try out. So this is a showcase for him, and we'll be watching, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, he has a great performance and we'll continue the relationship in the future. Would you be uh, weary if, if he does have an amazing performance and tries to parlay it into opportunities elsewhere, or do you feel you'll get that from uh, refusal? Listen, uh, you know what, I, I, I feel like if, uh, if that was his goal, you know, bless him, you know, because, you know, he, uh, you know, he has to look for the opportunities where they're at, you know. And if we're too slow in, in making a deal, then I don't, I don't blame him. Listen, yeah. he's uh, a great kid, he's got a family support, 
and um, you know that's just that's just how it goes in this business. I mean, speaking of additions, he could be a new addition if he signs after this. Uh, Cyborg Santos, what was, what was your opinion? I mean, you have a long relationship with her. What was your opinion of how that ended with the UFC? Pretty ugly. Dana White calling her a nightmare to deal with. You know, all the the video. I mean, what was your feeling on that? Yeah, you know, I didn't. I didn't even see the video to be honest. You know, so I'm not. I don't have any reference. But I can only talk about my reference with her, and she's always been very good to me, very respectful. I've been respectful to her. Uh, to me, she's the greatest female fighter of all time, hands down. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. You know, if people have any doubt, watch those fights in 2007, eight, nine. Uh, you know, when she was 23, 24, 25, 26, I mean, she's had such a long run. So talk to me in 10 years or 12 years for all these other people think that they're the greatest. Mm -hmm. And listen, we had, we, we had all the girls, right? We had Nunez, we had mm -hmm. um, Cyborg, we had Ronda Rousey, Rousey, we had, yeah. Rousey, we had Misha Tate, yeah. we had, we, we're the ones that cultivated and developed them, right? Mm -hmm. So I know, I, I know, to me, I, I think I know, I have <laughs> a good sense, right? So to me, she, out of all the fighters in the female division, she is the GOAT. And uh, when the GOAT is free, we definitely want to reach out and have a conversation, which we're doing with Audi. It's nothing guaranteed. Uh, it's nothing guaranteed, but you know, I'm hopeful that uh, she'll come over and, uh, and sign with uh, Bellator in the next you know, seven to 10 days. Speaking of availability, uh, Paige Van Zandt is planning to fight our contract. Is that someone, especially with the husband on board and the, and the company, mm -hmm. is that someone that you would be interested in talking to when that, when that opportunity comes up? You know, I don't even know really what her contract status is. I just know that she's a fighter for, the, for Zufa right now. So my, my, my philosophy has always been, look, if you're a free agent, right? and you have the opportunity to shop yourself and get true market value, why would you not try it? Mm. You know, why would you not go out and talk to the New York Jets mm -hmm. and the Rams and the Bears? And so, you know, to me, it's like, uh, that's what I would tell uh, the fighters. Like, look, you have an opportunity to be a free agent how many times in your life? Once, twice, maybe three times? Mm -hmm. Go see what you're worth. Because if you're, if you're that person, that, that female fighter or the, a male fighter that is of that elite stature, you will make money because people are going to want to bid for you. So to me, you want to make some money, get your free agency, and if you're a free agent, come talk to us. Uh, this is two more questions. Um, uh, Horiguchi lost yes. his, his title fight in Ryzen. Is he likely to come back to Bellator to defend that title sooner, or is it still probably this one fight this year, you won't, we won't see him at Bellator until 2020? Um, I think that Horiguchi will fight in Japan at the end of the year, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the fighter's name is Kai that he lost to. Which I think, listen, the guy, anything can happen to me, <laughs> like Horiguchi. But um, I think that the guy came out, jumped on him. I think Horiguchi probably underestimated him a little bit. I think the next fight will be a little different. And uh, if, if whether Horiguchi's a champ or not in Ryzen, he is still the champ in Bellator. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can have those two fight in the, in the Bellator cage in the future. Uh, somewhere in America or maybe even Japan. We'll see. And last question, because we talked about you know people availability. You're always bringing in big time talent. Um, two people that you were inter interested in Vitor Belfort, Sage Northcutt, and they're going to one championship. Have you felt a serious competition from one championship? Are they throwing out a lot of money to make free agency much more difficult I mean, than it was two years listen, ago? Listen, you know what? There's like obviously there's other buyers right now, yeah. right? Yeah, PFL. You know they're yeah, yeah. giving out yeah. the. I mean, so there's players and there's people throwing out money, and I just think that you know it's like look, everybody's going to have some, right? And I think, you know, for us, we're going to go after the free agents, but also we, we build from the bottom up as good as anybody. And if you look at our roster, our roster is built for North America and Europe and, and, you know, it's not built for Asia, right? So you need a different roster to be successful in different territories. And so, uh, you know, we'll see. But I will say this, like, in 2006, 7, 8, uh, when I first got into the mixed martial arts from kickboxing, um, you, you had a... A lot of mixed martial arts players. Think about this: Pro League, mm -hmm. yep. IFL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you Bulldog. had Affliction. <laughs> you had Bodog. Yeah. You had Pride. Yeah. You had Strikeforce. You had UFC. You had like eight players mm -hmm. back then, right? And then they all weeded out to whatever you know it, it, it ended up being. And now, to me, this is the second the second phase of that, right? People getting in, thinking it's you know they're going to come in, and it's, but they got to figure out how to make money at the end of the day. Yeah. And then so if people, the people that figure out how to make money, make a profitable business, will survive. Everybody else, eventually, will go away. And then it'll happen again and again and again. So I think that if you're asking me, this is just like a reboot of 2006, 7, 8. And I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. So we'll see who's here in four or five years.